There are 45 shotguns in Destiny now, and it can be hard to know what's best for PvP with how much they've changed over time, so I rank them in a tier list for you. But we're doing things a little bit different today, where I walk you through each level from F tier choices to avoid, all the way up to the nuances between A- and A+, then ultimately the best of the best. Starting with F tier, these are the bottom of the barrel. Like, I don't care what role you have, there's a better option, so stay away from these, like the hand in hand. It's interesting because it's a classic green drop from the game's launch that they brought back as a legendary. It used to be a precision frame, but now it's an aggressive, and what does that mean? Well, it hits for over 22 damage per pellet, meaning you only need 9 of the 12 to kill at any resilience, but to compensate for that, they have a really wide pellet spread, making it tougher than you think. Just look at the difference compared to a precision frame, and it's absolutely worth it on some shotguns, just not this one. Range becomes really important on these frames, and the hand-in-hand -hand is literally 10 out of 10, last place, worst of its archetype. Xenoclast. This one's a lightweight shotgun, and this archetype has a bit of a history. From being mediocre for a while, all the way up to being great, now it's back down to basically slamming your desk with frustration. These deal a smaller pellet damage at just over 18, meaning you need 11 of those 12 pellets to kill, and their spread pattern is okay, but with latency in the game, it's very hard to manage. I do think people are still getting used to these right now because they just aren't reliable for one-hit kills anymore. You have to be fully expecting to swap weapons immediately, whether it's used as a primer or a cleanup situation. Now, they do have high handling to help with that situation, but Xenoclass is problematic because it has the worst stat package of its 7 in the subfamily. It's got one notable perk I think people sleep on, which is Disruption Break for the fact that you can swap to your Kinetic after, but with 12 perks a column, you'll be running strikes for 10 years before you get a god roll anyway. Now how about the Ikelos SG V1.0.3? Or some of you would probably say Ikelos, but either way, you might have 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Like this thing's been remade three times from season three, 11, and 19. I think the most recent change was just switching up the barrels so you can have like full bore and maybe fluted instead of rifled or full choke. But yeah, it ends there, okay? Rapids are like, they're tough people. There's a few that are usable, but not this one. Like we're just gonna move on. I promise you can do better. And last but not least in the F tier is the Comedian. It certainly serves a purpose in PvE, and no surprise, I guess, coming from the old Grandmaster rotation with an Adept version. But yeah, it's just not meant for PvP. The subsistence one-for-all combo against AI is cool, but for Crucible, let's just move on to our next ranking, which is D tier. And these shotguns are not hot garbage like the F tier. These ones are salvageable with the right rolls. You can find a better version almost every time, but if you're SOL on weapon RNG, these are okay. No Reprieve is the first on the list, and it's a slug shotgun, which I'm curious, did you know that there are actually two different kinds of slugs in the game? There's the archetype with low aim assist but high handling, and then there's the ones with high aim assist and lower handling. Both of them are fine with the right perk setups, and you'll see over the course of the video which ones to avoid and which ones to chase. And the No Reprieve is one of the low aim assist ones. That isn't an automatic D tier, I end up recommending a low aim assist slug very high up in the video. But similar to Comedian, this one's just not made for PvP. Admittedly, Snapshot is a great perk on it, it's always nice on slugs, but it's missing a lot of the exciting ones, so we're just going to move right on to Toil and Trouble. This aggressive has been a fan favorite for a long time, and even one that I used to advocate for, but it's time to move on. The reason it was a fan favorite for so long is because it has the beloved Threat Detector Snapshot roll. For those that don't know, Threat Detector is an animation scaler making your swap speed very fast. Not only does it add handling when enemies are within 15 meters, but it takes the total animation speed that your Guardian is doing swapping weapons and cuts it by 20%. What that means is that on low handling weapons like the Toil and Trouble Aggressive, you get a lot of bang for your buck because it's cutting 20% of a really long animation. I'll talk more about this perk later on, but the main drawback on Toil and Trouble is just the range. This thing whiffs more than any shotgun I ever use. Like I always come back thinking, no, no, it'll be better this time. And it just isn't. And it's probably a good example of why opening shot is so strong on the other ones. But let's talk about Reckless Endangerment. It's an out of the box lightweight with just two perks per column. And you'll want to use perpetual motion over steady hands here. The base handling as a lightweight is high enough that you don't really need steady hands to get that super speedy swap. Perpetual motion is a lot more consistent feeling across this shotgun over the whole course of using it. And I'll admit, it's a really nice feeling shotgun, but fails in comparison to so many of its other counterparts. Like I talked earlier about how these archetypes are great for priming people, which means doing chip damage, or more importantly, maybe a cleanup kill when someone's running away, but this one is awful for it. Do not recommend. All right, one small step, another rapid fire frame. 
And you know what? I'm actually going to just group it in with dead weight and die side. Let's talk about all three of these at once, okay? They have slight variations on another. And if I had to pick one of the three, I'd probably go with die side. But the differences on these three shotguns are so minute that they're just all D tier anyway. Like one small steps, perks got slashed with the new update. Deadweight is something my Gambit lovers will know for having 8 million perks in each column. So it's like, why even try? And then the die side, it does feel a bit cleaner. The perk pool is okay. Not god tier, but I still like my slide shot demolition roll. The surplus elemental capacitor roll feels good on arc, but honestly, you can just do better. Rapids really struggle, and I think Bungie's got to do something. Like, just give these things amazing handling. Imagine if this had 100 handling, all Rapids. Would you actually think twice maybe about using them in PvP? I bet you would. And we'll even talk about the uh, the Basso Ostinato. Did I say that right? Basso Ostinato? My goodness. This one's probably the best D tier Rapid. Opening shot does give it some life, almost enough to bring it to C tier, but not quite because there's one that's better than it. But then you have until it's returned, brand new in Season of the Deep. And admittedly, I have the least amount of time on this one, but I managed to borrow some rolls to really get a feel for it. And something I noticed was a huge opportunity loss by having offhand strike in the third column without hip fire in the fourth column. Those two go like bread and butter, but here you just don't really have what you need for PvP. Something that is cool on this new one is unstated hunger, the origin trait. It gives you extra stats, in particular handling, but it's only when you're out of abilities. So I feel like that was kind of another lost opportunity by not having surplus. So either way, all five of these rapids end up being D tier and we're going to round it out with two more. Fourth Horseman, an exotic mega rapid fire. Do you agree with my D tier placement on this one? I legitimately almost put it in B tier because of how it shreds a Titan in their bubble. Then I moved it to C tier as I started to play more and think about it and then ultimately landed on D tier. For those that don't know, its exotic perk basically makes it a rapid fire frame on crack. It's just got extremely fast rate of fire and the perk broadside makes it so that each successive shot deals more damage than the one before. You can definitely argue that it's the best for like a spray and prey situation when you're just surrounded by enemies but ammo economy and the overall reliability getting used to this thing really holds it back so the final one in d tier is the last man standing it's a new aggressive frame but bungie pulled a fast one on us by putting threat detector and opening shot in the same column come on bungie don't do me like that the fourth column has a newer perk called discord though and i think the best way to describe it is how it works kind of like harmony but faster so when you get a kill with your other weapon if you switch to this one as fast fast as possible, your shotgun has really quick ADS and a tighter accuracy cone with a boost to airborne effectiveness, meaning you're just going to do better in the air. I need more time to test that specifically, but on the shotgun, it's really not where you're going to see as much of a benefit anyway, so we're just going to move along, my friends, and talk about the C tier. These shotguns are noticeably better than the bottom two, okay? They can do some serious work with good rolls, and they don't put you at a gaping disadvantage. Kicking this section off will be the beautiful Prophet of Doom. Look at this thing. It is so gorgeous. I feel like people either love it or hate it, but I think it's cool. You've got opening shot, a perk you're going to hear a lot of. I'll try and shut up with that, but it's very special. Even if toned down, it's still a really nice perk on shotguns. But when it's paired with Prophet of Doom, it's kind of a lost cause. This is the precision frame, so it's got that amazing vertical spread that I talked about, which makes it one of the best archetypes. But Prophet of Doom is locked behind a raid, Garden of Salvation. You can certainly head over to the D2 LFG and find a group to try and go farm for this thing, but there's better precisions out there, so just don't worry about it. Mindbenders, another roller coaster situation here, okay? We have five versions of this thing. From the OG quick draw slide shot, absolutely mapping people from outer space, grinding that damn strike for hours and hours on end. And years later, it comes out of a GM with an adept version. Like it's been through the ringer. Middle of the pack stats, even with the adept version, which by the way, I still prefer quick access sling on my shotguns over adept handling. The quick access sling mod on a shotgun is a scaler as well. So what it does is it cuts 10% of the animation off. And what that means is on sluggish shotguns, you're cutting more time off by doing that than just by adding 10 handling with an adept mod. Now you can't take that statement and apply it to all shotguns because there is a tipping point where the 10 handling might be better. If you do have this in your vault and you want to go give it a shot, I recommend fragile focus, especially with the buff and pairing that with threat detector or surplus and you'll still feel good. But okay, let's talk about Retro Futurist, a lightweight frame. Nice looking shotgun. If you've got one with quick draw and trench barrel or maybe swashbuckler, it's definitely worth having some fun in quick play. As a lightweight, you sprint faster with it. These damage perks can definitely get you rolling if you're a really aggressive player. But yeah, Bungie, you, you kind of hurt lightweights a lot. So this one's borderline D tier. I was feeling pretty generous putting in the C tier. Now, Witchbringer, on the other hand, may be the one rapid worth using. 
The ceiling is still C tier here, but it's honestly impressive. For having a straight jacket of disadvantages as the archetype, man, this thing just feels totally fine. My favorite role of all the ones I tested is still my own personal role of hip fire opening shot. Maybe because this is one of the highest ranged rapids combined with opening shot, it's just, it's got some swagger, like some C tier swagger, but swagger nonetheless. Bone Chiller is another slug shotgun, and it's different from the last one I talked about, because remember how No Reprieve was the low aim assist, high handling one? Well, we'll call this one Type 2. It's got nearly double the aim assist at around 60 base, but lower handling, like 36 compared to No Reprieve's 65. I still rank this one higher, even though I'm a sucker for those fast feeling weapons with high handling, because, well, I won't name it. I'll just put the image on screen because I've mentioned it a lot so far. I still think slugs are a little bit slept on and with just the right setup you can make them pretty deadly. This one isn't elite by any means, but it can definitely get the job done. Ragnahild D, and you know what, I damn near did put you in the D tier. This reminds me so much of Toil and Trouble, like it's just an absolute whiff machine. I do love that it's craftable, you can pick the exact role you want, and for me that's definitely perpetual motion and elemental capacitor when I'm running Arc Titan, specifically thanks to the knockout melee effect. Like you can make this thing feel really good if you've got a ginormous titan punch following up with it, and I guess that's sort of the definition of this ranking, you can make it work, but it's certainly not the best. Now the last C tier is Nessa's Oblation. We'll call this slug type number 3, because type 1s have around 30 aim assist, right? Type 2s have around 60, but this one is right in the middle of those two groups. It's got 48 base aim assist and middle of the pack handling. Also a decent perk pool too, like it's legit. Opening shot of course, harmony is fun, vorpal against supers is great on a slug, demolitionist in the third column to help with your grenades. Not a lot of bad things to say here if I'm being honest, there are just better options. So I'm going to keep it real with you, this one's a C tier in comparison and you'll see why later. B tier shotguns are where things start to get real. You are perfectly fine with any of these and they're worth looking up your rolls and dim. A god roll B tier will absolutely beat a poorly rolled A tier for example. And we'll start with an elephant in the room which is Felwinner's Lie. It's nothing compared to what it used to be, but that's fine. Bungie's made it pretty clear that they let this thing shine for quite a while and it needed to make room for others to grow. It's still fine though. Surplus opening shot is a staple on shotguns. For anyone new who's unsure, what Surplus does is it adds 10, 25, or 50 handling depending on the number of abilities, 1, 2, or 3 respectively. If you're a Warlock with Ophidians to help out with the abysmal handling, feel free to try out Slide Shot. The main thing I'll say on this shotgun is that with a toned down opening shot, it would slide down to C tier, but you're fine to keep using it. Now Wastelander on the other hand, people seem to think this thing's amazing, and don't get me wrong, it's good, like I've got it here in the B tier for a reason, but it's a far cry from S tier. And not just because it's struggling as a lightweight archetype, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to educate a little bit about swap speeds and animations. I won't nerd out for too long, I just think people should know that some animations in the game are awkwardly long compared to others when you're switching weapons. You see, for the longest time, I hated Wastelander or even Chaperone, and it just felt like their handling stat was lying to me. The exact same handling stat on two separate shotguns that share different animations are different. They are scaled differently, and this one is slower. Like, you know, the way he just pulls it out, similar to the Joker handgun from the Batman movie, it's just so frustrating and throws me off completely. And I'm sorry, Wastelander, for stealing the stage, not even talking about how awesome it is that you're craftable, the fact that you're probably my favorite one-two punch choice in PvE. But yeah, I just don't like your slow animation, okay? It throws me off. Moving on, though, let's talk about the Lord of Wolves. And you know what I'm going to do for this one? I'm going to let my friend Nomad tell you about it because he just made a video on it. Now, I know many people are going to celebrate this, but all I could think of when I was testing Lord of Wolves was, what the f*** happened to this weapon? Shots were flat out not registering, and the weapon either had no range or slug range. There was no discernible difference in performance in either normal or release the wolves mode at all. There was no consistency in using this, and I think Lord of Wolves got hit with one nerf far too many. Sojourner's Tail, slug type number one, low aim assist, high handling, kind of a beast, not gonna lie. Quick draw opening shot, I feel like a broken record here. Now slugs are continuing to struggle while you're in the air until Bungie does something about that, but I think I love this one because I can run fluted to get really high handling. Like the combination of opening shot on top of a range masterwork and accurized rounds getting you to 100 range while also being able to choose fluted barrel to get much higher handling is really really cool. 
for those wondering why I would care about handling when I've got quick draw, it's because of the way that perk works. Quick draw gives your shotgun a hundred handling for its swap animation, but then the moment you start to aim down sights, it cancels it and resets back to the shotgun's base handling. For me, that's still annoying. So if I can use fluted to kind of help balance that out and keep me around 80 the whole time, I love it. And while we're at it, we'll talk about Blasphemer. If you've got it, same juice. It feels even stickier on headshots compared to Sojourner's Tail because it's the second type of slug with a higher aim assist. But then the flip side is you just have to deal with lower handling. So I kind of prefer Sojourner's a little bit over this one, but it's sort of preference, I guess. And they're both C tier in my opinion, regardless. But since we're on that whole topic of handling, let's talk about Sudden Death. This is an aggressive frame shotgun and falls short in the whiff department, kind of like the Toil and Trouble in Ragnahill D. You have a lot of head scratching moments where you're like, where did my pellets go? And yet for some reason, it still had so many people chasing a god roll in the Prophecy Dungeon. Well, that's because of combining Threat Detector with Elemental Capacitor. And I want to make something clear. It's not that these two things stack, okay? So I'm going to run you through why it's such a unique situation. Threat Detector times one means one enemy is within 15 meters of you, right? That'll add 25 handling to your weapon, plus cut the animation down like I said earlier on the Toil and Trouble. What really makes Threat Detector special is that when there's two enemies near you, you'll get a second stack, which immediately puts your weapon's handling to 100. It's kind of like Quick Draw in that regard, but better because it still applies a scaler to that 100 handling situation. The catch is you need two enemies near you. What Elemental Capacitor does is it just adds 45 handling at all times as long as you're running an Arc subclass. Now because the handling stat maxes out at 100, what this means is that when there's two enemies near you, Elemental Capacitor is doing nothing. Threat Detector is going to get you to 100, so that plus 45 from ECAP is kind of a moot point. But for someone like me who cherishes consistency, you feel like at all times this thing is just buttery smooth. And I think that's why a lot of people ended up going back to chase for it. But okay, I feel like I just talked your ear off, so let's discuss without remorse because it also has that cool combo we just mentioned. Threat Detector ECAP, but a little less appealing because this one already has really good handling at base. If you like it, I can see why. It still feels really buttery smooth. It has fragile focus, which can help your range a lot. I've mentioned that a couple of times, but in the same vein, it's a bit less impactful because with an archetype meant for cleanups, you generally take damage and it doesn't proc as much as you'd like. As a primer, you can definitely feel it, but even looking back at old footage, it's just such a niche situation on this archetype. So I went with B tier because it's certainly better than the ones prior, but you can do better. Since we're talking lightweights, how about the 7th Seraph CQC12? Another one that definitely stands above the bottom three tiers. I don't actually have a paper reasoning for this one. Like it's usually a gut feel from having tons of hours in the Crucible, mixed with the knowledge of stats and perk rolls that you can get and which ones kind of stood out. But the 7th Seraph, I don't really have a great on paper reason. I don't know if it's the animation mixed with the look of the gun, not taking up much of the FOV at all. Like it doesn't cover much of the screen. Maybe it's the sound of it. Like I truly don't know why. It just slaps. You can do completely fine with this thing. I almost put it in A tier, but there's certainly a better one out there. So yeah, let, let me know what you think of this. Like I, I just love this shotgun. I don't know why. It's kind of a unicorn within its family. And our final B tiers is the Compass Rose and Retold Tail. Both of these are precision frame, which is currently the meta, so why would I go with B tier and not higher? Well, to be honest with you, at this point, when we're moving on to the more elite shotguns, we're talking about the slightest differences in small details that really do make a difference. These two shotguns are right on the line between B and A, but there's a reason I lean to the former. Pulling them both up, they have almost identical stats. Both of them can get quick draw snapshot. Both of them miss out on opening shot. One's from the Dreaming City and Sexy, the other one's from Solstice and also Sexy. Truly fantastic options. You cannot go wrong with these. They're likely the best ones within this ranking, but there's just two more out there that edge them out. So let's talk about them. A tier shotguns, a league above the rest, and so tight between why I rank one more than the other that I actually split it up into A minus and A plus. Both levels are incredible, but have meaningful differences worth pointing out. So to kick us off, let's explain what held those other two from being A minus. Compass Rose has a new role in town. At the time of this script, our next Solstice event is going to bring us a better version with the other barrels according to D2 Foundry, which by the way is probably the best website I've ever seen created for Destiny. Cat is an absolute wizard when it comes to UI. 
She's got a dedicated Discord talking about feedback, new ideas, and somehow like never sleeps and just always implements all these new ideas constantly. Like this website gets better and better every week I use it. You can search every weapon in the game, toggle perks on and off to see what they do to the stats, look at the range curves or even the TTK at every level of resilience. Like it's just, cat, it's incredible. But I digress. The reason why I'm ranking this newer compass rose over the other two is simply that flexibility I mentioned earlier. Being able to use something like fluted to get that extra amount of handling or heck even full bore being so much better than rifled is just massive. Had to include it because it appears to be objectively better and I'm kind of excited to grind for one. Second on the list for A- is the Fortissimo 11. Type 2 slug with high aim assist and then mediocre but manageable handling and a great list of perks. A little frustrating with a thousand of them in each column, but if you have one, it's really great. So many viable options. You've got surplus, steady hands, perpetual motion, demolitionist, threat detector. Like all of those are just third column, fourth column. You've got opening shot, frenzy, e cap, moving target. I really do love that one, even over opening shot sometimes. Because if I have low mobility, this makes you stray faster when you're aiming down sights. On slug shotguns in particular, that's pretty special. Zero Synergy is a cool origin trait where you get a bonus 40 handling after reloading. It's not like it's passively on all the time, but we'll take it. Overall, really clean sights. Just a great job on this slug in my opinion. Reese Walker, the best lightweight in the game. It's fighting a lost cause, but you can still dunk with this thing, okay? I think a lot of people are hating on it right now because they've still got their head on what it used to be. So from that perspective, yeah, it's relatively rough if you compare it to the past, but it's still fine. The outreach roll can pump it up to a 90 range 70 handling combo. You just really need to remember it's a primer or cleanup. You can't try to ape with this thing and down people with one hit kills. That will lead you to inevitable frustration, but the moment you learn how to change your style to fit this bill, it'll do work for you more than any of the other lightweights. Who doesn't love Skulking Wolf from the Iron Banner if you happen to get a newer roll? Going off radar as a Titan, I'll take that any day. Let's talk about another aggressive though, Astral Horizon. Gotta be like the sixth version, am I right? A season 10 version, a season 12 version. Multiple variations within those seasons actually when they change the perks around. Then you have Adept versions, then you have the season 20 version. They just keep pumping these out like it's candy. Threat detector, no threat detector. Opening shot, no opening shot. Elemental capacitor, no elemental capacitor. Bungie my heart, stop FOMOing me to death. Like, seriously though, great shotgun. Check your dim. Who knows what people have out there for perk combinations. It's a hard hitting aggressive, reliable for one hit kills up close, a great stat package, which is the main reason why it stands above the other ones I've talked about, especially being adept, but it's not the best. A minus is where it belongs and I'm going to reference back to this later on, but I want to talk about the next shotgun, which is Philo. First in, last out. The one that gave birth to the hip fire opening shot montages. My God, is it fun? Please, 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 if you have that combo, take it for a spin. Hip fire opening shot. I don't even need to explain anything about this slug in particular. It's like a meme build that actually results in Wii Rans. Go look for it. The final A minus is the Chaperone. A beast for stats, no doubt. A 100 range slug, 80 handling, and even better when the perk procs. So let's talk about it. The exotic trait is, well, yeah, it's a slug. That's the trait. The perk on it is called Roadborne, and how that actually works is after your headshot kill, your next shots are going to be boosted, like big time. You get 20 more handling, so now you're up to 100. You get faster reload, and then I think it's 16 or 17% more crit damage, meaning you can kill someone from further out, right? Because you have better damage drop off. You also have a faster follow-up shot. Like, it's just cool. It's a really, really cool shotgun. I blanket it with A- minus because it's got that slower animation. Remember I talked about Wastelander before? Gross. A minus animation, I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's talk A plus. That little edge over the ones that we just discussed. These next ones will absolutely cook and you can feel the difference in your gameplay. Practicist, a precision archetype with a beautiful vertical spread and great rolls. I feel like I've beaten the good perks to death here, but this is basically an upgraded version of a lot of the ones we've discussed with the amazing perks to go with it. The god roll on this is very reliable, and as a kinetic, some people might argue that it's at a slight disadvantage since we have so many amazing kinetic primaries, but honestly at this point with like 8 million weapons in the game, there's a lot of good energy primaries too. Great option that you're going to do completely fine with in any PvP mode that you join in. A plus number 2 is Imperial Decree, an aggressive that's craftable like the Ragnahild D, but much better. 
I even rank this one higher than the Astral Horizon, and it's tight considering the Astral has an adept version, but you can craft this and get enhanced versions of the perks. If you weren't aware of the difference between regular and enhanced, these are the differences side by side on what perks I use. And what I want to talk about with this weapon is the fact that it's also a kinetic just like Horizon, but it's so much better on your FOV. Have you ever noticed when you aim down sights on an Astral Horizon, it takes up like 80% of the screen? Like you can't even see anything that's going on, let alone find your opponent to try and kill them. Imperial Decree is a pretty old shotgun that they finally brought back as craftable, and it's just really clean. Super easy to aim, whether you're hip firing or ADSing, and it's just absolutely worth crafting. Probably my favorite kinetic spread shotgun. But let's talk slugs. Kenor's Axe is one that I think people are sleeping on. It's basically a better version of Philo when it comes to PvP. You know that hip fire opening shot combo I mentioned? This has the same magical combo except better. And it's got origin traits to top it off. Skulking Wolf makes it so that when you get a kill while low health, which basically means you're going to have no shields, it's around 65 to 70 I think that triggers it, it'll remove you from the radar for the next 10 seconds. Shooting your weapon will break that and you'll show up again, but you can really catch people off guard. Another option is Rocking Suro Synergy for the handling after reload that I talked about. But yeah, when it comes to Iron Banner, if you've been playing and you've got this in your vault, go look at it. Like, I truly think it's worth chasing this role. To round out the A-plus ranking, we have the Inquisitor. I damn near put it in the S-tier category, and I still get surprised by how little I see this thing out there. Possibly because it's held behind the Wall of Trials, of course, but it's an absolute beast when it comes to stats. I know I've mentioned that a few times, and I'm going to mention it again later, but the ability to achieve 100 range and 100 handling is surreal. Think Chaperone, but no kill required. Opening shot to boot. Best airborne effectiveness on a slug. Origin trait selection. You got alacrity on this thing. It's an insane situation when you're last man standing. Truly a magnificent shotgun. And you don't even need that one perk. You know which one I'm talking about. Fragile's fine. Harmony's fine. Demo, perpetual motion, steady hands, all fine. The best thing about this shotgun is how easy it is to manipulate to fit what you need. Given the perks or barrels or masterwork, all that stuff that you get, you can generally move things around or switch whatever it is to have that nice balance of range and handling, which is everything you want in a slug. It never feels like it whiffs, even when I'm in the air, and it's right on the line between A plus and S. So let's move on to the final five. S tier shotguns stand above the rest without question. These are the ones you'll grind hours and hours for. The ones you swap to no matter what when you're facing someone really sweaty. And I'm kicking it off with the Found Verdict, a classic that still hangs. I mean, Bungie just nailed it with this one. Even through all the ups and downs on aggressive frame shotguns, this thing continues to shine through. It crosses every threshold you need. Like for an aggressive to feel consistent, you need just enough range. For it to feel smooth, you need just enough handling. And this one's got it. This is my current role, and the only thing I change is maybe corkscrew, but man, it still feels good. Part of why I put this in S tier is that whenever I notice I'm having a rough time in Crucible, I tend to always come back to this and it just sort of turns things around. But there is a contender. So number two is the Matador 64. Probably the most popular one out there right now. It's the Precision King, so best spread archetype. And you can get that dreamy threat detector opening shot roll. You're dealing decent damage on this archetype, meaning you only need 10 pellets out of the 12, as long as they're running lower resilience. And the fact of the matter is that although there's more emphasis being put on resilience now over time, most people still don't run six or higher. Next time the dungeon's in rotation, I highly recommend you just go and grind for this. Now time for the heritage. I thought this thing was slept on. Maybe it is, maybe I'm out of the loop. This thing's just insane. I got so lucky. The very first Deepstone Crypt run I ever ran, this dropped. Insane handling, amazing range, high aim assist, and now it's craftable. A pain, of course, for some newer solos to find a team, but it is worth it to go get this thing. Killing Wind reminds me of Roadborne on the Chaperone. Snapshot, amazing for slugs. Moving Target, incredible for slugs. Offhand Strike, my god, remember how I talked about the lost opportunity cost with this perk early on? If you think Hipfire opening shot is good, try combining Hipfire with this perk. It's just silly, and you can run enhanced versions too because it's craftable. Like, let me put this into context for you, okay? Hipfire will make your precision angle higher. What does that mean? Think larger hitbox. So you're running around ready to make your next headshot, and you can miss a little bit more. But part two is that it also gives you a tighter accuracy cone, which just means the slug is going to go where it's supposed to. And part three of Hipfire is allowing aim assist to work from further out. This is perfect because slugs are meant for higher ranges. 
Go to pair this with offhand strike and guess what that's doing? Well, it says, hey, let's pump the damage fall off so you can still get that one hit kill from a really high damage slug from even further out. But we're not done there. We're going to make the precision angle even better. So it's basically headshot city and that accuracy cone to make sure the slug is going to go where you're aiming. Well, let's double down on that. If you don't have a crafted version of Heritage with these two perks, I seriously recommend you go and try it out. I digress, we'll move on to the final two, starting with Duality. This one's been my favorite for a long time, and I just can't put it down. For new players watching, this exotic is very special because it's both a spread shotgun and a slug shotgun. When you hip fire, it's a spread, but when you aim down sights, it's a slug. Something you should know is that spread shotguns are low range while slugs are high range. If a slug is going to one hit kill someone from like 10 meters, you're never going to do that with a pellet spread, right? Well, this exotic covers both those situations. So those sporadic moments where you get caught off guard and you just need to blast 12 pellets in their direction, bam, you're covered. The moments where you can take your time and aim for the headshot at a further range, you're covered. And a really cool thing about duality that a lot of people still don't know is that it has its own unique damage drop off. If I take this found verdict up close, you're going to see 22s and 23s for damage on screen. The moment I step back a little bit though, you're going to start to deal less and less damage. All the spreads are like this. They can't go out that far, but duality's hip fire spread follows the slug damage drop off. You can deal max damage with your duality hip fire for a really long time. So it's kind of like, you know how I mentioned lightweights are great for cleanup because they have really long range and they have decent pellet spread, but they just don't deal much damage. Duality hip fire is the ultimate cleanup tool. And I think Bungie realized that by making sure it has high handling. But is it as special as the newest conditional finality? What a cool design, Bungie. It's got a dual barrel for solar and ice, or I guess stasis. Depending on how much is in the mag, you're gonna have stasis first and then solar. And I just wanna point out before I forget, really high handling, by the way. Thank you, Bungie, for not messing that up. Weapons can be completely ruined by feeling sluggish with low handling, so just great job making sure you didn't mess that up. Back to the exotic though, the main thing on this is called paracausal pellets. We've got the dual barrels with fire and ice thing going on, right? Well, when you shoot someone, if you hit them with 10 of the 12 pellets, it's going to apply the corresponding impact. If it's a stasis shot, you're going to freeze them. If it's a solar shot, it'll ignite them. Very cool concept. And if you noticed on YouTube, a lot of people made two videos on this. Like at first glance and your first time using it, it doesn't feel good. The reason is because the range is finicky, but the more you use it, the more you realize just how special and good this thing is. Maybe that's just me. Let me know your thoughts. I just think it's really special. And the final ranking for this video is who's the best guardian to use on these things. Because I held a tournament for $1,000 putting three warlocks, three hunters, and three titans all against each other to make that very decision. And it's right here in this video. 